Welcome back, troglodytes, to the boxing and unboxing vlog. All right, my friends, this one, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit scared to open it. There's strange sounds coming out of this. It rattles, it shakes, it hisses, it, um, yeah. What is in this package? I guess let's open it. Sounds kind of mad, whatever it is. <sighs> All right, it's, it's a Gibson custom case, but it has these weird bang marks on it. Here we go. <gasps> when I saw this thing show up, I was very happy. This is a Cobra Burst Custom. It's got a very similar history to the Black Widow guitar. <laughs> so I thought I would give it a, a hyped up unboxing as well. I mean, this thing, it's pretty worn, but I got it because I'm saying goodbye to the Widow today, but I waited to send it on until I could get a photo shoot of these two together because man, they just belong together. And this is, I think my first Cobra Burst color. As far as historical significance goes, no, I don't believe this was the origin of Cobra Burst. I think it came out like a year before this, but I'll do some research and some digging before I make the final video on this one. Here's another one that should be fun. Just as a bit of advice, USPS Parcel Select Ground is just about the worst service you could ever use. I mean, on their website, they advertise it as if you don't need your package to get there in any time at all, in particular, use this service. I've had guitars take like three weeks to get here because they use this. And to be honest, it's not any cheaper than using UPS Ground. I think it just comes down to what is currently available. Most times you're much better off just paying a little bit extra to get it to go priority. Chainsaw case, generation two, you know there's something good in here. Looks like they may do with what they had package material wise. And now that I have it open, I know what's in here. This is an eBay buy. I don't really like buying from eBay that often, but I'll do it if the deal's good enough, right? And I had made the offer on this and he was like, okay, I'll take your offer, but I need like three weeks to ship it. So I was like, eh, okay, I guess, guess we'll do it. We'll see if it ever shows up or if this is some sort of scam. It turned out to be the real deal. Well, I guess I got to open it first. But we've got one missing latch, not a huge deal. Ooh, we've got a, a cherry sunburst standard here. I've been on the record saying like 70s era standards. They're not necessarily my favorite. I mean, I don't hate them because they have weird three piece tops. I actually like it, especially when they're bearded ladies. Now to be a proper bearded lady, in my opinion, you have to have two highly flamed segments. This one's only got one, but hey, all right, we've got our first one to box up here, and it is a pink blanket. <laughs> the double cut Les Paul standard. I've got to say, out of the three or so double cuts I've had, this has to be my favorite one. It feels the best, and I think it plays the best, even compared to that custom shop one. And the prototype's kind of a tough call because that thing's freaky, it's got weird specs, and I do enjoy it. But as far as just, you know, a standard, you know, kind of a Les Paul sounding guitar, this was definitely the one I preferred. But I definitely am glad I got to hold on to this as long as I did, because then we got to do all those fun comparisons. You can check out those videos in the future and or now, depending on when this gets posted. But fun fact with this one, it's going to join one of those old Donzi Les Pauls with that owner. I 
And now, unfortunately, as I alluded to earlier, we have to say goodbye to this magnificent guitar. I never knew just how much I would like this series, the, the Black Widow. This is such a historically significant piece, I just don't think people fully appreciate it yet. I mean, most people that saw the video, they liked the guitar, don't get me wrong. It's just, I don't think enough people know that these things exist, or how these birthed all the other widows. So I really do think this is a sleeper that will become extremely valuable in the future. But for now, I, I'm really actually happy where this is going, but he owns a horror shop in California. And this is essentially going to be put on display as, you know, decoration for that. I'm sure he's going to play it and stuff too, but I think his main motivation here is, you know, future collectible value and just owning a really sweet guitar. So he's going to be ecstatic to get this. Let's go ahead and get it packed up. Next one to pack up here. Hey, this one didn't take too long to sell. It is the Gary Clark Jr. SG. I'm really happy I re-reviewed this one. Personally, I would prefer the yellow finish over this one simply because, you know, it's a little bit different on an SG. But I think I finally have a better understanding of this model and what it can do. I had a few people asking me, can you get just the middle pickup on this? Like, can you turn the neck and bridge off and just play with your middle pickup? No, for whatever reason, however it's wired, that does not work. You cannot just isolate the middle pickup. That's why this is more of like a blend switch rather than a traditional volume. And again, these aren't true P90s in their construction. They're a little bit different, you know, a little bit more Fender-esque sounding, but this guitar, it was a bunch of fun. I gave it a great blowout deal, sold in less than 24 hours. Let's go ahead and get her packed up. I woke up this morning to a notification that this guitar had sold. I've had this one, I think a year and a half, almost two years it seems. And it was part of a series that I'm happy I did. I mean, I was a little bit disappointed with how many views this particular one got on its review, but it still has to be my favorite one out of the Zoot Suit series. I love the Les Paul. And the reason for that is this has the P90 humbucker combination and it's a 498T. This is more of a traditional bluesy sound in the Zoot Suit Les Paul as compared to all of the different Zoot SGs. Those guys got ceramic pickups, the 496R 500T, and those in that particular guitar were a little bit too hot. Moving on here, this, this is just a tough episode, guys. I can't tell you how stupid and dumb I'm being selling this guitar. This is one I should probably keep, but again, at this point in my life, it does me no good to hoard away all these nice examples because I can use the money better in other aspects. But hey, if this channel ever takes off one day, you can bet I'll start a museum. But the last Kalamazoo custom, I don't know why I sold it, but I did. I didn't particularly get a crazy price for it, but I got a price that I thought was fair, but usually it has to favor me in order to sell these things. But yeah, we have to say goodbye to the very last Les Paul custom to ever leave the Kalamazoo factory. I mean, definitely check out the full review and demo of this one if you happen to miss it. But this is such an iconic guitar. I mean, not everybody knows that this thing even exists and was designated as the last one, but I love the Custom Shop Originals. That little decal up there, because that means it's a one-off, usually something very special. So, I guess I say goodbye to this guitar today. And it's going to a great home though, because we were talking like over the course of a week or two, partial trades. I'm not sure what ended up happening. I think he got like a loan from the bank, but this is going into his personal collection now. 
So who knows? This is might be the last time you ever see this thing for sale for the next 30 some years. Or maybe he'll post this thing up at a higher price and get top, top dollar for it. Whatever you do with it, man, just enjoy it. Our final one to box up here. Yeah, this didn't take very long to sell. My Gibson Sonics. You've probably seen this in the background of some of my videos when I'm on the workbench, maybe even some of my Instagram posts. It's been disassembled probably for a good three or four months now. And I actually got this guitar for free because I bought so many guitars from a collection and this, it's a bit of a basket case. There might have been a headstock repair. When you get it in the light just right, you can see what looks like one. And there's definitely some stress back here. I guess let's go look at it under the black light real quick. There doesn't appear to be any overspray though, so I'm not entirely too sure what the history of is on this. It probably just got stressed. But anyways, it's got cracks by the neck pocket. I mean, the neck pocket on these are never too tight anyways. I sold this one basically for a little bit less than its part out value because this one actually has the really rare nine point adjustment bridge on it. I sold these for as much as 150 bucks. I mean, you've got the pickups in here. They're the velvet bricks. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but some people like them and will pay decent money. I mean, we're not talking like $400, like a standard set of pickups from this era. I gave a rough estimate of a hundred bucks. I think you could probably get up to 200 from them, but I sold this, how well was it? Like around 350 bucks. It was a good deal, but it, it definitely needs some work to be better. And I didn't actually do a review on this one because I'd rather have one that's stock, all original, doesn't have any setup issues. But honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the Sonic series. Man, we just keep selling stuff. I started off this particular recording session knowing that I needed to pack up the Zoot Suit. But while in the process of doing that, I sold the Sonics. And in the process of packing up the Sonics, I sold this one. Man, I gotta start pricing my stuff higher. I almost have no guitars left. This is what was left of the proposed Swap Sunday series. Unfortunately, we were about 100 to 150 comments short of that series actually going on. Now that doesn't mean maybe we won't do it some other time, but, but for this particular try, we did not meet the threshold of a thousand unique user comments and 1,000 likes. I mean, we got the 1,000 likes. We got, I think, like 1,007 comments, but there were quite a few spams of people just, you know, repeating their comments or just typing A, 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 A. It had to be unique user comments. And the other thing that made me go, hmm, maybe we shouldn't do this series is, I don't want to say I got ripped off. I probably should have looked at this closer because I doubt the guy who traded this knew this either, but there's actually some cracks in the back of the instrument. Now, I don't necessarily feel them flex. It might just be in the clear gloss finish, but I mean, they definitely look like cracks to me. I don't really see them on the inside of the instrument anywhere, but I just decided to sell this thing as is. I mean, remember, I was willing to accept $500 cash, and that's pretty much what I sold this thing for after fees and shipping. I think I got like $664, so I'll be a little bit better than taking the cash offer. So let's go ahead and pack this one up. The custom shop DC, it's being sent back because there were some undisclosed issues and potential shipping damage that might have happened to the electronics. I still did a video on it, that way its trip to Ohio wasn't completely worthless. But that's all I have to share with you today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.